Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Mega Aquarium Strategy and Tactics. So today, we are going to be covering the nuances and tips regarding equipment. Obviously, we have, uh, we have uh, carefully selected our tanks, um, and uh, now we must build the equipment to help power, filter, heat, and otherwise care for the tanks so that the fish inside do not die. Because, <laughs> well, that would not be good. Now, for our uh, example today, I've, uh, I've selected a, a pair of tanks that we're going to be uh, setting up equipment for that I particularly like this combo. I, we've got a, um, a 4x3 shallow wall tank. Uh, this is uh, AKA the, uh, the newbie tank, the wall tank right here. And we've got a four by four lagoon tank. This is actually one, despite being up here at the, uh, at the top here, this is what I consider one of the deeper tanks because it's considered to be a deep tank. It's got the higher capacity for its size. You can get the deep water decorations in it and it's good for, for you know, a little bit more oomph and a little bit more storage capacity um, and some bigger fish or just more of them. Um, but we uh, we have a lot to do with these uh, with these tanks here. Now, basic tank stuff, and I know the tutorial went over this, um, is um, obviously you're going to need filter power, you're going to need um, uh, temperature control uh, and whatnot. But choosing the right piece of equipment is uh, important, mainly because for a couple of reasons. One, the more pieces of equipment that you have just in general, the more they're going to break down. I know these reliability um, figures are here and they'll, they'll sort of speak to how often they break down. But even with the low, even with the high reliability here, it's not a question of will you get unlucky and have your equipment break down? It's when and how often. Equipment's going to break and it's going to keep your repair and fixing uh, uh, Aquarius busy. And too much equipment will keep them too busy and they'll fall behind and, well, bad things. So, generally get only what you need uh, to keep your fish alive and thriving. Now, one of the things you can do to sort of plan ahead for this is to sort of plan out your sizes ahead of time. So here, for example, we're just gonna we're just gonna look to the 30 uh, size tank here. Now, we we notice here we could say, for example, slap down a large heater, uh, and that would certainly get it nice and heated, but that would be kind of overkill. It doesn't need 90 points of heat. It's a lot of that would be going to waste. Um, and obviously, you know, a, two basic heaters would also kind of be going to waste because not only would that be two pieces of equipment, which take up a lot more space and need to be serviced, but it's, it's you know, you have a lot of overflow. On the other hand, the power heater is right in the sweet spot right here. So a power heater, if we were going to uh, service this thing, would be perfect. Going a little bit over isn't going to hurt your fish, by the way. And actually, there is a little bit of a benefit to having uh, it being a little bit more. Because if this thing breaks down, it will slowly tick down in effectiveness. It'll start providing 35 heat, 34 heat, 33 heat, and eventually slip below the comfortable threshold for the fish in the tank. Now, the moment it slips below the comfortable threshold does not spell instant death for the fish, obviously, but it gives you, you know, it it starts ticking down their health a little bit, but the more excess heat that you have, the the longer time your, your fixing people have to get to that heater and bring it back online. Uh, so having a little overflow is not bad. I wouldn't, I would not build a piece of equipment just for a more overflow. Now, the other thing to keep in note here is with the filter power, uh, same thing here. Now there is uh, there is a benefit to that um, to to going in here is that basically you want your filter power to be equal or greater than the capacity. And as you go higher and higher above the capacity, you start to run into some diminishing returns. Um, and and so there's only so much 
filter power by itself can help your water quality. But that's where the skimmers come into play. The skimmers and the, and the filter power, as you can see, we've got 36 filter power going in here, but we've got zero skimming power. Now, what's the difference? What, what does filter power do to, uh, compared to skimming power? Essentially, the same thing, actually. The filter power and skimming power does essentially the same thing. The main thing is, though, that because they're considered two different types of filtering, they don't suffer from each other's diminishing returns. You can get a full strength allotment of filter power and a full strength allotment of protein uh, skimming power. Later in the game, you get um, the nitrate reactor, and nitrate reacting is a third flavor of, of basically water quality enhancement that doesn't uh, step on the toes of the other two different types. So it is good to have both filter power and uh, um, skimming power at about equal uh, types. There's no advantage to like going crazy overboard on filtering or crazy overboard on skimming. Um, but now with uh, 36 heat, 36 skimming, 36 thing, we've got, uh, we've got plenty of capacity in this tank to hold plenty of fish. But you know what? This is pr this is a darn efficient setup, but maybe not the, the most efficient. If we, because um, sometimes sometimes the larger um, pieces of equipment are more efficient and more effective, and sometimes you it is worthwhile setting up multiple tanks. So, for example, if you're doing a freestanding tank like this lagoon tank, you're gonna want to make use of this wonderful tool called the pump. Now the pump is going to allow you to transfer water from a distance uh, from one tank to another. Uh, the basic pump is okay, but it's really limited. And I'm not just talking about the fact that it can only uh, filter a tank up to seven spaces away. It can only handle one tank. This right here, this one can only handle one tank limit, that's really kind of the killer here because the power pump and above will uh, unlock so many more strategic possibilities. So for example, let's build our power pump here. And you know what? The power pump does not need to be touching any tanks. We can see this little diamond of, uh, of uh, radius here. As long as that some part of that diamond is touching the tanks that we want, we can get them hooked up. Um, in fact, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just drop, you, uh, drop you down here. Actually, we'll... Um, Let's expand things out a little bit further. You'll see why in a moment. So let's say, let's say like right here. Now we're going to want to hook up this tank right here, but we're also going to want to add a tank and hook up this tank. Now look at this. We've added both tanks here. The, the, uh, the, the, um, the shallow wall tank here and the lagoon tank. And now because they are both hooked up to the same pump, the game is treating them as if they were the same tank with an 86 capacity. Now granted, each individual tank is gonna be compared, to, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna track how many fish are in that tank, but for filtration purposes, it is now a combined tank. We can make use of that because now we can bring out the big guns. Large heater, completely wasted if we were to use a large heater on just this little tank, but if we were to stick a large heater on, um, on, uh, uh, in this whole system, it would heat by itself both tanks. Now, you can stick the large heater onto the, um, the, the pump itself here, as you can see that's being effective, but you can also attach it to one or the other tank and it will still filter into the whole system. We heat the water here, the water here gets pumped into the pump, the pump pumps it back out here, this gets the hot water too. So in a way, the pump allows you to have a lot more surface area for support equipment. Now that would be a little bit overkill for just these two tanks, but later in the game, when you start dealing with some massive tanks or lots and lots of little tanks, you're gonna want to have lots of surface area to build lots of equipment to um, capitalize on, on economies of scale. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's capitalize on this economy of scale. So let's get the large protein skimmer, but a boom, get the large filter, but a boom. And now, now 
with, with again, with just three pieces of equipment that need to be maintained. The, felt the pump does not actually need to be maintained. Um, but three pieces of equipment that need to be maintained. We are now servicing properly two whole tanks. Um, so now we have a lot more tank space that we can put to use with fish uh, and get our aquarium up and running a lot better. Um, so I hope uh, I hope this little gambit helps you out and helps you plan out your aquariums a little better. So in our next um, in our next uh, episode, we are going to talk uh, more support equipment uh, layouts and uh, as well as tank decorations in preparation for the fish themselves. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya!